Hey guys, yes, this is Satonic here. I realize you might be a little confused by this whole by this whole setup. I haven't done one of these face to camera videos in a while, so I thought it would make a decent change. Reading off a script does get does get slightly old after a while, and this channel has become a bit faceless recently, so I figured this would go somewhat of a way to changing that, perhaps. Hopefully not too many of those new subscribers are scared off by this. I don't do this too often, but hell, maybe if this becomes a thing, I can invest in some decent scenery so you don't have to just look at like a curtain and a messy desk. Oh, and before we get started, I just wanted to make it crystal clear that yes, I know I need a haircut. You don't have to tell me, it's it's already implied at this point. And I think I'm just not going to get one just to spite the lot of you who tell me I need one. So any comments telling me I need a haircut are just automatically redundant. So just, just to put that out there. Also, just so we're clear, I am not Logan Paul, nor am I the third long lost Paul brother. So I, I don't know. A lot of you seem to think I look like Logan Paul. I, I, I don't see the see the resemblance myself, but hey, I, I enjoy a good laugh. So thanks for that, at least. But anyway, now we've got the pleasantries out of the way, I came across this interesting article on the register that I thought we could talk about. It's how to avoid getting burned at Black Hats, destroyed at DEF CON, or blindsided by B-sides. So if you're a bit confused, every year about this time in Vegas, early August, there are three major hacking security conferences, Black Hats, B-sides, and DEF CON. And what happens when you get a load of hackers in one place? Well, some of them are going to be less than savory. Of course, the majority of people at these cons are white hats or they're just really you know, nice people. You're going to have a few gray hats in there, but a small number of people are going to be black hats. It's, it's just inevitable. We'll never know the proportions of how many white hats compared to black hats there are, but I would imagine the black hats are significantly outnumbered. But either way, it is important to take precautions when you visit these conferences, as you could get hacked, of course, or even worse, you could end up really embarrassed and end up on the wall of sheep, which we'll get to in a second. As someone who's never been to DEF CON, Black Hat or Beast, or any of these conferences, I'm obviously the best person, the first port of call for advice on how to not get screwed when visiting these, these gatherings. Though, whilst I haven't been to any of these, I have been to C3 in Germany a couple of times. C3, Chaos Communication Congress, is basically DEF CON, but smaller and more community oriented from what I gather. It also takes place in Germany, but during winter rather than Vegas during summer. So as an Englishman, I find the weather is a lot more pleasant. I just prefer being in freezing conditions as opposed to blistering 45 degree heat. I do have vlogs up from the two times I have been to C3. I'll link those in the description if you're interested. I had a lot of fun going there, meeting people and making the videos, so check those out. Anyhow, let's take a look at this article. It is, it's a pretty good article and The Register in general is a great website for hacking, for security, for just tech news in general, so do check it out. I'm not sponsored by them. Actually, speaking of sponsors, we are overdue. Uh, we should talk about Maltronics.com for a quick 15 seconds, of course. Maltronics.com is a site run by myself. It's a hobbyist hacking hardware store with Wi-Fi deauthors, bad USB Malduinos, USB protectors, and Wi-Fi keyloggers. I won't go into too much more detail on that, though if you do want to have a look, it's interesting, if nothing else, Maltronics.com. I'll link it in the description. I should note, well, as it states here, that the truth is, at these conferences, you're probably going to be fine, even if you don't take any precautions, just on the balance of probability. You'll be alright. But if you're a security hobbyist, even if the odds are in your favour, it's still good fun to take precautions because, I don't know, for some reason we, we find that fun. <laughs> so a video talking about security at these conferences would be incomplete without talking about the Wall of Sheep, which is mentioned here. So what the hell is the Wall of Sheep? Well, if you go to DEF CON, you'll find a massive projection on some wall somewhere that will say the wall of sheep on it. And you'll see login credentials, passwords, IPs, etc. And essentially this information is made up of people who use DEF CON's open network, the network with no security. They use that network without taking the proper security precautions. So that means without using VPNs, without using encryption. It's meant to raise awareness about wireless security and hopefully embarrass people uh, in the process. 
And it is completely legal because this Wi-Fi network is owned by DEF CON and anybody is allowed to sniff that network. You're not allowed to go out of your way and sniff other open networks. I'm, I'm pretty sure that is that is illegal. But as this network is again owned by DEF CON, it's, it's, it's fair game. DEF CON does have two networks. There's that open network that you're allowed to sniff, but there is a WPA2 enterprise protected network with all the bells and whistles to try and make it completely secure or well, as secure as possible, because nothing's completely secure, right? If we look at some of the history of the Wall of Sheep, it started with people taping plates to walls with logging credentials they had found on, the, on this open network. But apparently the hotel staff wasn't too pleased with that, so eventually it came up with a much more slick solution. Oh dear, they even have a section here where they have some of the most crazy things they've seen while sniffing traffic. Um, let's see, there's pretty tame stuff about people breaking up. Uh, with their girlfriends, whatever, whatever. Someone decided to file their taxes whilst at DEF CON. That, that sounds like a pretty bad idea. But you see, even well-respected people, people within the security community who are meant to know their stuff, even get burnt by this kind of thing. Here, a well-respected author in the security community decided to share their unpublished book whilst not using SSL. Well, I suppose they kind of had it coming at that point. So in this article, they do state that there was one incident that got someone expelled from Black Hat, but that's the only incident they could come up with. It seems some journalists broke into the LAN connection of the conference and tried to extract login information of other journalists in order to play a practical joke. Personally, I'm not too convinced that this is the only example of illegal hacking that went on at these conferences. Most likely, it was the only one that got caught but I guess that just means the other ones just kind of flew under the radar, which um, is to be expected, I guess. It does say here that the conduct was not supported by the Wall of Sheep project. I found a YouTube video discussing the legalities of the Wall of Sheep and whether it should be made illegal. I'll link that down in the description if you're interested. Apparently some people insist on bringing burner kits to the conferences. I, I don't know who has the ability to just buy phones and laptops that they're just gonna chuck away if you can. You know, props to you. I wish I could do the same. You can always spot the overly paranoid. They are the ones who cover their USB ports. You know, there is a good reason for that though. Of course, bad USBs, USB rubber duckies, Malduinos, bash bunnies. These things all use USB as their attack vector. So sealing off USB ports really isn't too out there. I do in fact have a video on how to protect yourself from bad USBs, so I'll link that in the description if you're interested. And just filling up your USB ports with cement is 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 a go-to option, if of course you can afford to use burner hardware. Probably the best piece of advice here is just not to leave your gear unattended, which to be honest, I'd be more concerned about it getting stolen than something happening to it per se. However, in Germany at C3, people would leave whole whole server units just unattended and just they just go away for the whole day and come back. So maybe maybe this is just an American thing. Another good piece of advice you've got here is to turn off your Wi-Fi just completely because this is just the easiest attack vector, of course. Also, it's a great idea to clear your saved networks list as say, for example, if you've connected to, I don't know, the McDonald's Wi-Fi in the past, someone could just create a cloned network with the same network name as that McDonald's network, and your phone would automatically connect to it. But of course, the overarching solution to this is just to turn off your Wi-Fi completely. Also Bluetooth, don't forget that one. Because even if you think you are secure and you've taken all the precautions, there may be vulnerabilities out there that we just don't know about. As talked about here in this article from ZDNet, I spoke in the past about new vulnerabilities being found in WPA3, a de facto unreleased Wi-Fi standard as it stands. However, it looks like there have been more vulnerabilities found in the WPA3 standard. Now, I haven't read through this in too much detail. I'll link it below if you're interested, though I suppose it's a good thing these vulnerabilities are coming out now before the standard is in widespread use, as if it was in widespread use, those patches would be a lot harder to get across. A lot of the other advice here is talking about the Vega Sun, which trust me, I, I was in Vegas last year. I only pa passed through it for a day, though it was probably the worst heat I'd ever experienced in my life. Right now I've got the windows closed so I don't get noise and it's getting hot in here, though Vegas is, is something else. <laughs> really be prepared if you're gonna head out there. Okay, well, it looks like I've been recording for about 21 minutes. I doubt this video will be that long. 
probably gonna have to edit it quite a lot. Though, let me know what you think of this new format, guys. Um, actually, there might be another ad spot I need to cut in here, which if there is. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. A long-time supporter of the channel, they provide quick, cheap, and easy PCB fabrication and assembly. Starting from just $5 for fabrication and $30 for assembly, they are my personal go-to whenever I need PCB work done. Recently, the channel Strange Parts was invited in and made a video on PCBWay's assembly line, a very interesting watch, I'll have it linked below. So go check them out, PCBWay, link is in the description. So yeah, let me know what you think of this new format, whether you liked it, whether you didn't, if the flow isn't that great, I will get a lot better if I choose to do this a lot more. So let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section and stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.